why I immigrated to South Africa and currently live and work as a dentist in the Netherlands. In this video, I will give you a dead simple step-by-step -step process that you can follow if you are contemplating immigration from South Africa. I recently discovered an article published in the Finance Ghost. It was first published in July 2020, but it only came to my attention recently. I did not have the luxury of this article, and I must say this article is a very clear um, framework that guides the reader in a step-by-step -step process of figuring out if and when you should immigrate. This article was written by an anonymous author and it was subsequently also published a few times in the ghost mail. Of course, I will link that in the description. The author takes the reader through a step-by-step -step process, uh, highlighting four specific topics that you can use and integrate in your own decision process. Of course, with the myriad of problems facing South Africa daily, and this list just seems to be getting bigger and bigger as the days go by, the component of crime and the extreme violence thereof, as well as the failing power utility ESCOM should probably top the list of most South Africans. The author makes a few remarks regarding an objective evaluation of crime and steps of mitigation that you can employ in order to avoid crime as far as possible or reduce your risk of exposure thereof. Of course, the author also makes a very profound statement, which I wholeheartedly agree with, that even in spite of the mitigating factors, if you still feel that you cannot live a fulfilled life within the constraints of the mitigating processes or just in general with the crime always hanging over your head, then most definitely that would be a strong enough reason for you to consider immigration. The second point the author uh, elaborates on is the separation of financial and physical immigration. The author says that within the confines of the tax laws of South Africa, you should consider moving your assets and your finances offshore and into safe havens as far as possible. Of course, and that is also the conclusion of the author, that once you start taking these steps, it is probably the precursor of you already on your way to make the decision of physical immigration. The third point the article discusses is how to make the decision of the physical immigration. This is where this article really comes to fruition and it gives the reader a kind of step-by-step -step process that you can go through in order to get yourself to the point of deciding that I want to physically immigrate. The author uses two variables to determine four different possible outcomes. Let's have a look at the graph and discuss it a little bit in detail. In quadrant two and quadrant three, uh, a very clear outcome is realized. In quadrant two, one can see that the proximity to family is very important and most of your family and friends are still probably in South Africa then. And on the right of that graph, is the income prospect. So looking at quadrant two, you also have a very good and strong income based within the confines of South Africa. So one should probably look at mitigating factors. And if you still feel that you can live a very fulfilled life uh, within these confines, then this is a clear answer for you not to actually consider immigration and you can stop reading this article. If we look at quadrant three, this is also a very clear uh, guideline and indication to the individual that you should immigrate since your prospects of income in South Africa is probably very limited or non-existent and you don't attach such a high value to the proximity of family and friends. It might also be that your family and friends have already immigrated. Looking at quadrant one, this is a very emotional quadrant to find yourself in. On the y-axis, the proximity to family and friends are very highly um, valued, but your income prospects within the confines of South Africa is very limited. The suggestions made in this article is that you can upskill, um, increase your um, educational levels. You may even start a business of your own. The problems with this quadrant and the mentioned uh, solutions is that, again, you still find yourself within the confines of South Africa with the ESCOM, with the crime, and unless you can also mitigate those factors, this quadrant becomes a very emotional quadrant and the author aptly names this an emotional 
push scenario that ensues where you are basically pushed to look for a haven outside of South Africa and therefore consider immigration. Quadrant four is where a lot of professionals find themselves in. You have very strong financial prospects in South Africa, a high earning job maybe, but your family and friends you attach a very low value to, or it might also be that a lot of them have already immigrated. Um, in this quadrant, the prospect of immigrating is also very positive and a pool factor is created where you consider immigration much more than in quadrant two where you are almost forced or pushed and there's not not such a clear answer as in quadrant three so in this quadrant where professionals would find them in you would then lean towards considering immigration a little bit more on a subjective or objective level then. In point four of the article, the author says that you should take the views of expats with a pinch of salt or even with a bag of salt. The author cautions that one should be wary of the confirmation bias given by expats in foreign countries. And what the author means with the confirmation bias is that you do not really get a very true answer to whatever questions are being asked or topics that are being discussed. It is almost as if one does not want to admit the whole truth to the other party or even admit the truth to yourself. So be very wary of who you ask, what you ask and what you do with the information, basically. The author rightly concludes then that it is the advice to try and take the emotion out of the decision as far as possible and on that topic i want to elaborate a little bit more there is something i like to call emotional immigration there are two components to the emotional immigration as i see it the first is of course being confronted if you are considering immigration and as the author points out you should try and negate that emotion out of your decision making process using the matrix system supplied is a very nice step-by-step -step process and also being brutally honest with yourself is the little bit of advice that i can impart coming back to the remark made of the confirmation bias the emotional component of immigration while still in south africa working through the process of immigrating or not is that the emotion can also lead to a confirmation bias within yourself. And what I mean is that being so highly loaded with the emotions during this process, you could possibly deny yourself the immigration process. Through your emotional process, you also try to admit to yourself why it is a good decision to stay and not to immigrate. In short, be brutally honest with yourself and be very aware of the emotions that goes into this decision making and everybody around you giving you advice, even locals staying in South Africa. A second component, and maybe that is where I can give you a little bit of advice as an expat, but this part of the information is more focused on once you have immigrated and when you do find yourself in a foreign country, maybe somebody is watching this that also has already immigrated, is as part of the emotional immigration, once you find yourself in a foreign country, be aware that you should also in your mind immigrate. A lot of South African expats, and I had to confront this in myself as well, are holding on to certain things and emotionally that becomes draining and that puts you into a whirlpool where sometimes if somebody do ask you for a question or advice from South Africa that is where the confirmation bias actually manifests. If you do not let go of certain aspects and you did not immigrate also in your mind. The call to action in the end paragraph of this article is advice the author gives to expats saying that if you do give advice, try to give it as balanced as possible.
I will admit in this video that we are human and there will always be some form of bias towards whatever is being discussed or whatever answer we give. I hope that through sharing this video and possible future ones that through sharing my journey and what I went through the last two years living in the Netherlands and also the build up before that you can evaluate for yourself if there is some value in my story and I wish the best of luck with your decision. If you had value from this video and would like to subscribe, like and even place your comments, that would be much appreciated and remind yourself of an anonymous person that once said you are only one decision away to change the rest of your life.